Today we're talking about the surface area of pyramids and cones. The slant height of a pyramid or a cone is measured along its lateral surface. So if you look at the <clears throat> pyramid and the cone at the bottom here, the slant height is shown in red. Okay, So the slant height line is along the surface and as you can see on the pyramid it's perpendicular to the base, isn't it? Okay, so the base of a regular pyramid is a regular polygon and the lateral faces are all congruent. So that means the measurements of all the sides of the base of the pyramid are the same dimension. In a right cone, a line perpendicular to the base through the vertex passes through the center of the base. Okay, so here you see some words, formulas, and numbers for surface area of pyramids and cones. But what I really would like you to do is rather than just go straight and use the formulas that they show you on this screen, to look at the shapes of the pyramid and the cone as they're flattened out and see if you can come up with the area or the surface area of those figures. Definitely read this and um, make sense of it for you. But to me, I look at this formula and it's meaningless and, until I start taking it apart and thinking about what the parts and pieces are. So I'm going to leave you to do that with care and think carefully about how the words, the formula, and the actual numbers, or even more importantly, how the words and the formula relate to the actual shapes. Okay, let's find the surface area of this regular pyramid. Okay, we're going to use 3.145, but that doesn't really make any sense because there's no circles in here, is there? Okay, so if I open up this figure, if I just look at it, I have the base, okay, and the base is 2.4 feet by 2.4 feet, so the area of the base has to be its width times its length, which is 2.4 times 2.4, which would mean the area of the base is 5.76 square feet. Okay? Now, we've taken care of the base. Let's look at the faces, these triangles. Now remember, in a rare, regular, rectangular pyramid, we're saying that all four faces are congruent. So that means that they have the same height and the same um, base. So the area, let's do that in a different color just to make sure we're on the same page. So the area of one face is one half its base times its height. Okay? But remember, we have four of these triangles, so we're going to do four times that. So four times one-half times, well, the base is 2.4 feet, and the height, that's a slant height, is, uh, let's see, three feet, right? Okay, so there we go. So... Uh, 4 times a half times 2.4 times 3 is about 14.4, exactly 14.4. So we know that our surface area is equal to the area of the base plus 4 times the area of, sorry, but I already did 4 times, so let's get rid of that, so plus the surface area of each of those four triangles, and that is equal to 5.76 plus 14.4, so that area is 20.616 square feet, but again, we asked to the nearest tenth, so that's about 20.2 square feet.
Okay, here we have a cone. And um, let's read the problem. The upper portion of an hourglass is approximately an inverted cone with the given dimensions. What is the lateral surface area of the upper portion of the hourglass? Now this is definitely a problem where I should have written use 3.14 for pi. And notice when we look at this problem that um, in actuality, it's only asking for the lateral surface area of the upper portion of the hourglass. So that just means this part of the cone. Okay? So if I were to draw that shape, the cone here, it, and I flatten it out, of course it would look like this. There's the base. And then here's the lateral surface area. Okay? But we don't want the base in our calculation. We're only going to find the lateral surface area. So when we look at the area of the lateral surface area, um, now that's just something we have to learn from the formula that's given. The formula for the lateral surface area is pi times the radius times the slant height. Okay, so here if you look at this cursive L, that's the slant height. Okay, so the slant height is, well, we don't know the slant height because they gave us the height of the cone. The slant height is this dimension right here, which we don't know. So it looks to me like we're going to have to figure it out by building a right triangle. So here's that right triangle. Here's the radius. It's 10 millimeters. The height of the cone is 24 millimeters. And this is the lateral height. That's what we want to find. So we use the Pythagorean theorem. So we know 10 squared plus 24 squared equals L squared. Okay? So <clears throat> we need to get our calculators out. Or else, if you recognize the Pythagorean triple, it's a 5, 12, 13. Let me make a little note of that in there for you. Maybe a 5, 12, 13, which would make the lateral height actually 2 times 13, or 26. So I don't need no stinking calculator. So now I have all the numbers I need to find the surface area. It's equal to pi times the radius, which is 10, times the lateral, or slant height, excuse me, which is 26. And that's equal to 260 pi. Now remember, I like to um, keep my problems in terms of pi until I'm ready to do my final calculation. And of course, <clears throat> that would say that our surface area is about 260 times 3.14, and that's equal to 816.4. What are our units? Our units are square millimeters. And that's the lateral surface area of this hourglass. Okay. Here's two problems for you to try on your own. A hint for problem number three is they didn't give us the lateral um, or the slant, slant height. You're going to have to figure that out. Have fun with these.